right. Well, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 31. We're going to look at verse 3 and 4 and then verse 16 as well. And Jeremiah uh, chapter 31, such an important chapter of the Bible. Um, not only do we see at the beginning of chapter 31, God telling him, I'm going to restore you. But then at verse 31 through 34, he, God is going to prophesy through Jeremiah the new covenant. The new covenant. Wherever you're at right now, say, I'm under the new covenant. It's a new promise. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, if you've been with us, we're looking at the heroes of the Bible. Uh, we're up to the prophet Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was a faithful prophet. And um, Israel is, is being held captive. They're about to be set free. You know, Jeremiah didn't reach anyone, particularly 42 years, weeping for the nation of Israel. We don't see anyone actually get saved. But his message was to a people held in bondage of what God was going to do. And, and the truth is, his message was true. It was faithful. He was a faithful messenger, like any good prophet. He didn't say what he thought. He said what God's word said. And here, Jeremiah 31, we're going to pick it up. Verse 3, it says, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. You know, what happens when people are disciplined by God, any of us, is that we begin to think, oh, God doesn't love me anymore, right? Listen, if God didn't love you, he wouldn't discipline you. That's what Hebrews said. It says, it says that God doesn't, you know, if he's disciplining you, it proves that you're his child. God doesn't discipline the neighbor's kids. He disciplines his own kids. But sometimes we need a little refresher, don't we? We need God to tell us, I love you, man. I love you. I'm for you. And that's what happens here. He goes, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. That's how the Lord draws us. You know, we're rebellious. We, we don't do what we're supposed to do. Well, you're going, well, not me, pastor, just you. Okay, just me then. We'll pretend. We're not. But what changes us? How does God win our heart? You know, have you ever played the game catch, Capture the Flag? You know, the whole point is you got to capture the flag. And there's all these other things going on. But at the end of the day, it's all about the flag. And listen, the enemy is after your heart, but Jesus is after your heart. And I can't tell you enough, give him your heart. How does he win our hearts? It's with his loving kindness. He says, I have drawn you, verse 4, again, I will build you and you shall be rebuilt. Now, I want to fast forward. I think at the beginning I said the wrong verse to verse 31. This is the new covenant. God is going to use Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, to reveal to Israel the new covenant, the covenant you and I are under. We're not under the old covenant. We're not under the Ten Commandments. Not that they're bad. But God, it's not an if-then covenant. It's a God said it and he's going to do it covenant. Behold, the days are coming, verse 31 says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. He says, this is a new one, not the same as the one I made with the Jews coming out of Egypt at Mount Sinai. My covenant, he says, which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Listen, after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds. He's going to, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. He says, I'm going to put my law in your minds. I'm going to write it on their hearts. Isn't God doing that in your life? Aren't you seeing, Lord, you're writing your word on my heart. I will be their God. They shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor. We're not going to need the Jewish system. We're not going to need people, the shepherding movement and people all up in everybody's business. Because the Holy Spirit's going to be here, right? No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity. This is the heartbeat. This is the core. This is the foundation of the new covenant. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. You know, God says, I've drawn you with cords of loving kindness. And you're under the new covenant. Listen, if you've asked God to forgive you of your sin, stop asking him to forgive you of the same sin you committed. You know, there comes a point where we go to God, Lord, I did this two weeks ago. And the Lord says, I don't know what you're talking about. You're under the new covenant. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleansed you of all sin. I don't even remember what you're talking about. I just want you to come to me. And today, whatever's going on in your life, go to Jesus. He wants you as Jeremiah, the faithful weeping prophet, told us. And Father, 
Fill us with your spirit today. Remind us our sins are forgiven. You remember them no more. And may we walk in the fullness of you and the fullness of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.